Hello my friends, Yossi here. Today we're going to talk about the GM closure in Oshawa and how to save Oshawa from an economic collapse. Okay, serious stuff today. This is Yossi Kaplan. I'm a Toronto realtor and investor. I help investors, buyers and sellers make moves and making gains in their personal and corporate wealth in real estate. Okay. And the reason I want to talk about Oshawa today is because it's going to affect us all and it's going to affect us a lot more than you think and it's going to have a huge effect on real estate and an opportunity. At the end of this video, I'm going to tell you what I think we can do in order to save Oshawa, how to save Oshawa at the very end, okay? It's going to be kind of a medium length video, so let's go. All right, so 10 years ago, um, what happened was that GM uh, and the car manufacturer suddenly uh, ran out of money, right? They spent all of it. And the government of Canada gave them $3.3 billion in a quote-unquote loan that I don't think they paid, I don't know, uh, from our tax money. And GM received $3 billion of that, okay? Now, yesterday it was announced that at the end of 2019 a year from now gm is going to close the plan they're basically not the, the way it was said is they're just not going to get any new orders you know there's there's nothing else for us to ask you guys to manufacture for us anymore okay now gm has been in oshawa for many many years it's uh it's part of oshawa and oshawa is part of gm but no longer and you know this is the industrial evolution we had industrial revolution that brought us the factories and the cars and then the industrial or the AI really evolution that is taking away all that stuff and replacing it with you know smart programs and other ways to look at the entire car industry and the entire the way we live. So here, uh, CBC uh, Union Chief warns Oshawa closing be first, shattering all Canada. Union Chief is correct in my opinion. Uh, Jim Glojo. Yeah, and everyone is stressed out. The unions, uh, the Ontario government, and the federal government. Everyone's stressed out. And if I were an Oshawa resident, a Durham resident, Oshawa, Clarington, Whitby, Bowmanville, you know, um, all these areas around there, I'd be very, very scared. Why? Because that three um, billion dollars we gave them before. Let's bring up the calculator. Okay, so three billion. So 3,000 million, and let's divide it by the 2,500 employees that are now losing their jobs. That's $1.2 million per employee. Why don't we just give them the money? Just give them the money personally, okay? Now, our governments are now arguing who can help them better, and the way they want to help them is by throwing money at them. Yes, maybe it's going to help, but you know, it's, it's, it's a Band-Aid on cancer, right? In order to become a qualified employee, a GM, it's so much training. You know, these guys, and I've been to the GM plant. Uh, my dear friend Vince from uh, Richard Ivy, uh, my classmate from Ivy School of Business, took us the entire class on a tour and opened our eyes to the amount of robotics and engineering and software and thought that's going into these plants. You know, the big truck is coming in and say, What's in the truck, Vince? Uh, this truck has the chairs, the seats in the car. And, this truck has the dashboard, and this truck has this, and they all kind of manage to time it all in right to the line where it all gets assembled. It's called GIT, just in time, okay? Um, and here, we're going to send all these people home. These people are highly, highly qualified employees, but they're qualified in a very narrow thing. Now, if they work there for 10 or 12 or 20 years, you know, first of all, I don't know if they get any pensions. Second, how are they going to find another 10,000 hours, you know, that's what it takes to be really good at something, an expert, 10,000 hours, that years, years of work. So you want to tell me someone who's like 40 or 50 or 60 years old, now is going to start all over again, start getting up at 5 in the morning and learn a new trick again, that's very, very difficult, you know, most of these people, Oshawa and the area is a family place and it's a family town, these people have families, the spouse probably working too, they probably have 2.1 and 2.5 kids, they got mortgages and bills and everything. And worse, worse is that this is going to affect us all. And let me explain, okay? So when you look at the plan closing, it's not only the 2,500 people are going to lose their jobs. It's 2,500 families, okay? So these families are three or four people. Let's say they're four, you know, uh, 
mom, dad, and two kids, maybe more. So that's 10,000 people now. 2,500 families. Now, if some of those divorced, that means that they need more than one home. So let's say 50% are divorced. That means that 3,750 homes affected in Oshawa. And that's a lot because Oshawa is not that big. You know, it's, 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 it's an area. Um, and obviously, you know, the GM people, they also live in Whitby and in Clarington, which is the municipality now for Bowmanville and everyone around there. Uh, and some of them may be coming from further away, but that, that's most of them, that's where they are. Um, let's look at the area. So here, here is, I just typed in uh, GM Plant Oshawa into Google and just put it on the 2D, okay? And we'll just zoom out a bit to see where we are. And you see, this is a massive built area here. I'll give you the, uh, the flyover, the satellite view, and then we're going to dig down. So first of all, so you know where we are, you know where we are. Um, here's this beautiful place that we live, and we're so lucky to be here. And really, the GTA, my friends, it starts in Hamilton, Burlington. Uh, in my opinion, it extends to Brantford, Cambridge, Kitchener, Waterloo, Guelph, and then come down here, Dundas, Holton Hill, Milton, and then of course Brampton, Mississauga, Caledon, all around the airport, all the way to Vaughan, Newmarket, all the way up here and east, right? Ajax, Whitby, all these areas here. Okay, so here we drill down, and this is Oshawa. And you can see that Oshawa is the center of everything. Brooklyn's really nice too. Okay, so now let's uh, fly in here. Thank you, Google. And you can see, I'm just going to zoom in a bit. And you can see this is a massive, massive place and a massive town. And just to understand how big this factory is, and at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you how to save Oshawa and how to get all these people good job that I think they're really going to love and actually make the transfer. And I think it's very important. I really hope that someone's high up there in our government is going to listen to this. And if they're not listening, tell them. And if they don't tell them, I hope that, you know, they come up with the idea. Okay? But this is the plan. It's massive. Look at these houses. Who do you think live in these houses? Yeah. You know, I live here, and then I work here, right? I live right in these houses here. And then, let me zoom out. Here is the GM town. It is massive. Look at the space here. Okay, this is space enough for thousands of homes. Now, a lot of these homes kind of built into nature. You know, I don't like that stuff, but it is what it is now. But these homes are massive, and they extend forever. And these homes, you know, there are... This is not just the GM people, because, you know, a family of, say, 4 or 4.5 average, you know, they... One works at GM, and the other probably works in town, maybe the service job, maybe the hospital, maybe in a clinic, maybe as a teacher, maybe uh, helping with the kids, you know, anything, really. Like, so these 2,500 families... Uh, remember, they, they're sitting, they, they're spread over 3,750 homes on average, say 3,800, close to 4,000 homes. And these homes are consuming and paying mortgages and consuming services from the area. So it's not only the 2,500, and I think maybe that's what the union guy's talking about. It's also everyone is giving them services. The milkman, the supermarket, the doctor, the lawyer, the cleaning staff, the city people. Every, you know, somebody needs to truck the food in here because we don't have any more farms because, you know, we live in and all that. There's so many of us, so the farms are here. Okay, so we need to get the food, and this food then goes to the food terminal. Da, 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 da. It's just endless. So the supply chain to feed the GM is one thing, as my friend Vince showed us, how these, car come, these cars and trucks come in, and they time perfectly. It's unbelievable. But also, the supply chain for the area to support the people that support the plan is massive. So what's the real economic impact here is billions and billions, like our friend says, billions and billions and billions. Why? Because these 2,500 people are really 10,000, and really these 10,000 are feeding and supporting and interacting with probably another 100,000. The entire Oshawa is more or less feeding off these plants. You know, if you took, if you stop these towns, what do you think the, the, um, the factory towns, what do you think is going to happen? Okay, I, I'll tell you a story. Um, the last two corporate towns in America were Empire and Gerlach in Nevada. Um, and I've been them. I've been there. And they're cute little towns. And what you don't know is during the gold rush and the oil rush, whatever they did there, these were really like big happening places. But the moment that the corporation went out, those cities died. 
Now, we're not in the middle of the desert in Nevada, and it's not just a little town, you know, stripped from 200 years ago. This is serious stuff. But, you know, if, you, if, if we look here, I'll pull some, uh, some stats here for you guys. And if you look at what happened in Oshawa in the real estate recently, look, 20, you know, it's kind of like 2009, it did okay, and then it dropped a bit, probably because the 2008, and then maybe they had some closures or problem there. But it's still you know, reasonable. It dropped by by 20 bucks on average, 10%. It's still, I can still hold it. And now it's starting to climb. And then look what happened. 2015, 21.4% up. 2016, 24% increase in values. This is, this is just from the condos, but it gives you an idea. Uh, 2017, 20%. 2018, a little less. You know, we reach, we reach a plateau here. So do you think that if there's a new construction in Oshawa, someone's going to go and buy it now? Right. Do you think that if I put my home in Oshawa on the market, and by the way, if you guys are Oshawa people, I'm going to help you. Give me a shout. Email me. I'll talk to you. I'll come down to Oshawa. I'll rent a car because I don't have one downtown Toronto. And I'll come see you. I'll see your homes. And I'll give you a precise evaluation for your home. And I'll explain to you what the best way for you is to retain your value or to sell it maximum. Because we can very much be looking at a, a, a situation here where let's say that only 10% of these 2,500 families need to move, okay? So that's 250 families, and so 250 families use about 370 homes if half of them are divorced, okay? And guess what? 250 homes in this area is a lot. Let's go to yossi.searchrealty.co. That's our search engine within Search Realty. I'm just going to put in Oshawa as the city. You can put it Oshawa as a keyword. Um, I'll do a one bath just to make sure it's residential, 300,000, so you know, it's a real house, and let's search and see what we get, and the, the, the system pulls 470 listings, uh, there's about a thousand right now if you look through MLS, I looked earlier, um, and you know, because I'm, I'm, res I'm restricting the search, I get a, a little less, but look at this, there's a lot of stuff to sell here, and these are areas for development, okay, this is great, we you out on the 407, they show us, this is the the Durham College and the University of Toronto IT College, which I love this stuff, and my, my buddy engineered that place, and there's some more stuff, so, you know, but who's going to come and develop now? Okay, there's another uh, uh, bunch of lots with 3,600, and there's more lots, and then we're going to start with the big mansions, and then we go down because I'm searching here by highest price. If I search by latest listings, you can see who's posting. If you come to this page and hit latest listing, you can see this is automatically updated, you know, the computer updates, I don't need to do anything, and you can see who's listing, so yeah, we got some, like, old bungalows for three seventy nine nine, but then we got, you know, these cookie-cutter uh, corporate homes of five twenty five. so something like this, you know, that's a nice home, but think about it, this house probably costs 3500 a month to carry, you need some, this is a beautiful home, you need some serious, uh, they gotta have kids, look at these, okay, this is great, so, you know, if 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 I if I am to yeah look at it, it's gorgeous if if I am to buy this house I need serious income to support it if I need serious income to support it and GM just left town and either I work at GM or serve GM how is it gonna happen okay so is this house still worth five twenty five when I showed you what happens in the prices in Oshawa okay that is a problem now. Here, it shows me 400 bucks a foot, the average uh, price per square foot. These are for condos, because I'm searching uh, through condos.ca, okay? And you got Whitby and Aja can pick a ring, and uh, I can't see here. What's this area here? You guys tell me. Okay, and on and on and on. It keeps going. Clarington, okay. Um, and if I go to MLS, you know, uh, um, it, it pulls a lot more listings. Um, and this is the inside way to look at MLS, and I can see here what's going on, you know, from the very expensive homes to the cheapest, I got them all, but the thing is, who's going to pay 1.3 million now? Maybe that was like a, an executive at GM. Now, who's going to buy this house now? Who's going to buy the 759 night house? Who's going to buy the 7, you know, who's going to buy it? What are we going to do? Okay, uh, at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you how to save Oshawa. But I want to talk a little bit more about the real estate and the economic impact because it's not only going to be in Oshawa, it's going to be everywhere. Obviously, it's going to be Whitby, Pickering, Clarington, da da da, da Brooklyn up here, all these areas, you know, Bowenville, 
Ajax, they're all affected because they're all connected to GM. Remember, GM is a massive, massive, massive place. Okay? It is as big as the town itself, and it was probably the thing that fed the town, and then people came to town to work at GM. So, you know, there are generations here. Three generations. The grandpa worked at GM, and the son and the daughter worked at GM, and then the son and the daughter, the grandchildren work at GM, or something like that. Okay? Oh, this is hard. This is hard not because I cannot find a solution. I have the solution I'm going to share with you in a minute because these families, you know, are facing the industrial evolution. They are, they are in a way, victims. Just like when the locomotive changed and the horse buggy changed, you know, and Canada Post guys, you know, you can, you can strike all you want, but you guys on the way out. Because you're going to be replaced by automated systems that are automatically driving these packages around. So unless you get up and do the, the work, we, we, you, are going to replace by robots. It's just how it is. Okay? And a lot of these jobs, you know, that were created in the 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s and 90s are about to be replaced. Truck drivers, gone. Okay? Uh, insurance agents, gone, except for some. A real estate agents, gone, except for some. Okay? Uh, financial advisors, do you really need them? They're smart apps now. They can do this better than humans. Okay? Do I need a financial advisor to tell me what mutual fund to buy when the app can do it for me using artificial intelligence? Okay? On and on and on. Now, why is GM leaving? GM leaving because it's doing just that. It's employing. It's understanding that the, the, the value for GM okay, is not in making cars that one person drives one car on a 401. That's done, my friends. It's done. You know, the next generation, the millennials don't even drive anymore. And below, I think it's called Generation Z or Z, um, they're never going to drive. The, the little pod's going to come. It's going to be some automated car, robotic. AI machine learning GPS, you know, rocket missile car. It's gonna come, door is gonna open, close, you know, you tell the app where to go, you're safe because you know where you are and the company knows where you are. Yes, they track you, but also know where you are. And then he drops you where you need to go, and that's it. And then the machine goes and picks up the next person, and after he picks the next person, he goes next person, and he doesn't even need parking spots because it's just gonna go recharge itself, and that's gonna be out of town or, or probably on the ground. You know, we'll just build it on the ground. And get all these machines on the ground, and that, that's where the machines are gonna, you know, uh, get serviced and recharged, and then come up on overground again and do it. Okay. So what's GM is doing? It's consolidating. It's taking all these plants and exploding three or four plants in the states too, and it's going to build one central plant, kind of like think of the battery plant of uh, Tesla in Nevada. Uh, you know, the, the Giga Factory, I think it's called, or the Giga Factory. I don't know how you pronounce it. But, you know, it's just one giant plan, completely robotic, ro robotized, I don't know how to say it. But what it does is, you know, like the whole engineering is done. And there's very few people. Now, you, we saw it in the print industry, the newspaper industry first. and It's, gonna, it's coming, okay? It's coming. We're not going to need drivers anymore. We're not going to need the, the, the Canada Post. You know, all these are going to go. We're going to need construction, although we can start doing modular construction. You know, there's a lot of solutions, and we're going to start thinking, what do we do with 8 billion people that most of them still work with their hands? And how do we uh, create value and, and, and make society and our lives better using our brains and technology now? Because, you know, only 1% or 2% of us really require to, to feed, to, to farm. What are the rest going to do? Okay? So we need more teachers. We need more doctors, we need more researchers, and we're going to need less of these old school jobs. Okay? Back to GM, how to save Oshawa from economic collapse. So the economic collapse uh, is here, it's coming. You know, I don't think anyone in their right mind is going to b start buying Oshawa homes right now unless you get them cents on the dollar. So this is from my site, from uh, yossi.searchrealty.co.co. And what you can see here, Oshawa Market Report, if you want it, I'll just send it to you. Uh, or you can just go to the site and type it in. And if you want the sold, just email me or call me, I'll send it to you. And again, if you're in Oshawa, I'll come talk to you. I'll come talk to you about your options. I don't care because we're all in this together. Toronto is not that far. We are neighbors. It's not that far. It is the same thing. Okay? 
Toronto and, Otto, and, and Oshawa, if I said Ottawa before, uh, forgive me, it's Oshawa, are the same. We all use the same Facebook, we all in Ontario, we all play, it's, it's the same. Okay, these are our brothers and sisters, and we all in this together. So the average price in the Oshawa uh, region is 616, 333, and it's about a thousand homes. And I think two more just added because I, I just opened this an hour ago, it was 987. So I don't know if they heard my thoughts and already listing or what, but you know, it's going to happen. And the median price, that means half of these homes, you know, 500 homes just under uh, are selling 569 below, and half of these homes, 500 homes, are selling 569 and more. And the reason the average is higher is because we have a lot of expensive properties uh, here. Okay, that's what pulls it up. And it's taking this uh, industrial into consideration, I imagine, because it shows up here. So maybe it's slightly skewed, but you know, it's probably like, say, the average price in Oshawa is 600000 But what happens when I take 2500 of the highest earning income families, highest earning families, highest income family families in Oshawa, take them out of the equation? So, yes, I, you know, the, the, the government is going to now compete. Who's going to give them more money? They're going to ripple effect of GM Oshawa closure. That's what we're talking about, okay? Um, so the government's gonna like throw money at them and you know, we're gonna bet better EI and better this and better that, but in reality, that's the wrong thing to do. What we need to give them, and I'm gonna tell you what to do at the end of this video. I'm gonna go back to this and I will tell you exactly how to make Oshawa happy and everyone rich in Oshawa and in Ottawa, okay? Not this. Just to throw money at, corpora at corporations doesn't work because you just gave to the corporation $1.2 million, million dollars per employee and then lasted exactly 10 years, so that we just spent 120,000. We gave it to GM for the employees. We could have given this to the employees themselves, and they could have invested it and keep the money in Canada. Okay? That pisses me off. And you know, what's the most reliable car? Is not GM. <laughs> I, I did that search before. You know, it's a Japanese car, everyone knows that. Like, <laughs> I don't get it. Like this planned obsolescence, you know, force us to buy a new car every year and make this car shinier and this is better and this is fusion cell, whatever. Oh, come on. The thing is going to come, pick me up. I don't even know what engine is in there. I don't even care anymore. It's just going to pick me up and drop me off and I pay through the app. That's the future of transportation. And it's not here because we don't need all these cars anymore. And we're not going to have, uh, you know, the 401 is going to have less and less traffic coming years. So we're going to peak with the cars probably the next two to three to five years, and then we're going to reverse it. And we're going to have maybe 10% of the cars we have today. So do you need to buy parking with a small condo? No. <laughs> Don't buy the parking because you're not going to have the car. Uh, convert the car to convert the parking to storage. I think that's a better idea. Okay, so this is, this is what we're looking at. And we'd be, so this is really the core here, right above here. That's, that's, that's the center of Oshawa right here. It's Oshawa Center. And all this, and then you got oops, and then you got all these houses uh, surrounding the plants, surrounding the plants. Okay, and so it makes sense. And this is giant. It just doesn't stop. And then there's more industry, and more industry, and I don't know what these are, but these are probably uh, industry to support the plant because the plant because the plant needs all these trucks coming in and lined up, and they have to have enough parts, and you know they have to enough enough. They have to have enough of everything to start pushing it into the plant, so the, because the plant cannot stop producing, right? It's the Japanese Kaizen thing. Everything is coming in, and it's like all zanned out. Okay, so to summarize, I think that Oshawa can see a major, major drop in real estate prices. I think that Oshawa can see a major, major drop in canceled uh, in, in new construction and permits and projects coming out. Now. Is it still worth it to buy something and say, yo, see, like this condo right on the go train, Oshawa, should I buy it? You know, I would wait. Right now, I would wait, and I think a lot of people would wait. And, you know, I'm a real estate agent. My job is to sell real estate. But, you know, I'm not going to tell you guys just buy blind. It's not right because I'm an investor, and all my clients are investors. And we're here to do good for ourselves, to get great homes, but also to make money. And a smart investor invests in a market that goes up, not in a market that goes down, unless you can short the market. And how do you show this market? You basically you find these families that decided we're going to move. Look at this. We're going to do, and this is just what's existing now, okay? And this family they're going to move out of Oshawa and say, okay, you know, 
if you want to more price today, I'll give it to you. You know, you bought this house for 300, it's for six, maybe I'll give you five. Are you willing to do this deal today? You know, and I think the more and more it will, because the government does not have the ability to turn so quickly, and in a year from now, a year is nothing, nothing. The government can't do it, you know. It's not equipped for it, it's not big enough, it's not small enough, it's not agile enough, it just doesn't have what it, what it needs, it doesn't have what it takes to do that. I don't think so. So I, I wish it could, but it can't. So this $650,000 beautiful home, Five fifty, four eighty. Oh, that's a good deal. But tomorrow, I think everyone will think it's less. Everyone will think it's less. Everyone thinks it's less. Everyone thinks it's less. It's less. It's less because the plant is not there. So the main economic engine is not there because it's right in here. And if I take the main economic engine, I, I take that out. What's going to happen to this twenty percent, twenty-one percent, twenty-four percent, twenty percent? Oh my God. Okay. And I want to tell you one more thing. Like, let's quantify this stuff, okay? So 2,500 families, right? We spend a million point two on families, so we spend three billion on them. Now, you know how the dollar, when I earn a dollar, it makes its way around 10 times more, 100 times more, because I buy the tomato from Judy, and then Judy sells it to get a pickle, and then we exchange it for, you know, <laughs> the, the office clip, and the office clip, you know, that guy that traded the office clip until he got him like an old beaten up Mercedes or something like that. That's the idea here of commerce. So one dollar actually translates to many, many more because it recirculates over and over again. Okay? So if that's going to slow down, that's just like a chain reaction you don't want to see. And imagine what's going to happen to tax income, tax revenue in this area. And then anyone that's providing and all the families and the factories that are providing to GM you know, what, what are they going to do? Like the guy that provides them the, the wheels and the guy, the factory that makes the brakes and the factory that ships in the dashboards. and I don't know, like well, all that little things, you probably got, uh, I don't know how many parts you have in a car, probably like 100,000 parts, right? And it probably comes from 20,000 different suppliers. Maybe it's like, you know, like the little electronics and then there's one, the one factory that builds the electronics and another that kind of buys it from a few factories and puts it together and the next guy, the next guy, until it becomes a dashboard and then, whoop, goes into the car. But you know what I'm saying? It's like it's a huge pyramid here. GM is just the tip of the iceberg. The iceberg is one percent, one, uh, one tenth above water what you see, but really the iceberg is massive here. Big, big, big problem. So what to do, Okay. I'm going to tell you in one minute how to save Oshawa from an economic collapse. And it's not only Oshawa, it's also Ontario. And for that, my friends, I need your absolute attention because I'm going to tell you something. You're going to say, Yossi, you are completely effed up crazy. I'm never talking to you again. Or you say, dude, you're onto something here. Okay? And I think I'm onto something here. So here's the GTA. This is the real GTA, okay? Hamilton. Oshawa. This is the GTA. It's not just Toronto. It's all the way. We're all connected here. Okay, and it's spreading like crazy, and it's going up like crazy. Don't forget, this is the center of the universe, <laughs> for me at least. It's not New York, but I love it. Thank you very much. I'm having such a good time in this town, and I love it. Okay, um, what you're looking here, this is the financial center, okay? The money is being flown from here, and it's coming in and out of this area. Okay, and all the executive oh, flying here, and this is where the center is. And you can see it's still open. There's still a lot of room for growth. But if only 80 kilometers from here, I got this big problem that I'm closing. You know, this is related. You cannot say that's not related, Yossi. It is completely related. And that's the fear. And once you see what the new technology, the industrial evolution, the artificial intelligence evolution has done, to one plan, and once you see what it's going to do to Oshawa, you're going to see what it's going to do to the rest of Ontario and then to the rest of the country, especially where we have manufacturing left. Yes. And I'm not a manufacturing guy, okay? I'm a real estate guy, I'm an investor, but I want to understand the economy. You know, Oshawa is a suburb, I look at it as a viable investment. And it is a suburb of Toronto. It's an extension of Toronto. And it's legit to invest in Oshawa just as much as I talk to you about Brantford and Hamilton a lot these days.
because I love Brantford. It's the place to go is Brantford, okay? But today we're in Oshawa right here in the GM plant and it's closing and the clock's ticking. The, it's closing in December. We got a year left. That's a very, very short amount of time. So what do you see here, guys? I see a giant factory. I see brown field, a brown land, the land that needs remediation. Okay, so if I need to remediate and take it all out and then clear the land and then build all the houses, wait a second, who am I building this for? I got no plan to support it. I need to replace the income that came out of GM with another income so the people don't have to move. The people of Oshawa, if you're hearing this, I'm telling you, what we got to do, not you, us together, all of Ontario, and Canada, of course, but this is an Ontario thing, first, is to get something happening in here. In this plant, there are millions and millions of square feet here that are already built with roof, with power, with sewage, with places for the employees to go, to rest, to eat, to work. The knowledge these employees have about robotics and advanced manufacturing is phenomenal. This is one of the best plants in the world. It'll be such a shame to take all this knowledge and to throw it away and to leave it overseas. Don't do that. But at the same time, we don't need to manufacture this anymore. So now I'm going to tell you, I've been saying, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you what to do with this area, okay? What to do with this area. And I'll tell you exactly right now. What is the number one growing industry right now in Canada? Except for real estate. <laughs> What is the number one industry industry that is growing right now in Toronto? Not so much. In Ontario, yes. In Canada, in Alberta, everywhere. What just happened recently? You getting my drift? All right, my friend. The, the answer is cannabis. Cannabis is legal two months now. The demand for cannabis is huge. The doctors that went to this amazing conference at the Spoke Club uh, on King West last week, two doctors, a neurologist, and the guy who basically, ed and another doctor, a family physician, uh, and also a trauma doctor who educated 14,000 physicians in Toronto, Spoke, plus two business guys, one that put the show, uh, the conference together, another the, uh, NHR guy. It was just fantastic. All of them are just brilliant. And... They said that this is the future. You know, cannabis is the way to go and medicine is now looking at how to extract the molecules and actually create proper medicine from cannabis that you can consume and you can prescribe and it goes to the clinics, to the hospitals, to the doctors. That's the future of medicine and that's our future as a society, as a province, as a country. I'm telling you. Now, I know it sounds like I'm running, but it's not, not, not today. But the future of Ontario is beating the Americans to the cannabis race. Again, how to save Oshawa from economic collapse is to take this area and make it into cannabis town. Produce the cannabis, research the cannabis, build the pharmaceutical factory here, and get the GM people to stay and to convert this giant, giant land into a cannabis factory cannabis research and cannabis manufacturing right here in Oshawa, Ontario. So the real estate prices can stay up. We have jobs for our friends, our brothers and sisters and their children and their, you know, entire families to stay in Oshawa. Because if we are going to sleep and we're not going to act enough and we're not going to take chances and we're not going to think really clearly about what's going on, these people are going to have to start to move. And when they're going to have to start to move, we're going to take all our money and say, oh, GM people, you know, we screwed you over. We're just going to throw buckets of money at you. But, you know, it's going to end. And when the money ends, they're going to have to sell. When they have to sell, they're going to have to sell at a loss or less. And the market's going to drop. And, and that happens. And then every other factory town basically will start preparing for this by start to pre-selling. Okay? And now we're looking at an inflationary environment where the Canada is trying to raise inflation. And now we're trying to dump the houses. So, hey, Mr. White, you're a GM employee and you buy yourself a 500,000 uh, here. You buy yourself a two, a three bedroom, 558,000, 175. But guess what? That three bedroom is only worth 450 now, Mr. Smith, or whatever your name is, Mr. White. You know, we, we basically, we gave you a really good, uh, you did like a 10 or 15% down because, 
you know, first time home buyer, you and your wife and your two kids and you're both working and you're doing great. So you on the hook for 500,000 mortgage, you'd say you put 60 down, which is great at the time. But guess what? The value of your house now is 450. So you owe me $50,000 just to get to the value of the house. But wait a second. Not even, but that means I mortgage 100% of your house. I'm not doing this. I'm the bank. I don't take any chances. I'm the bank. I'm the strongest thing in the universe. So I'll give you the 90-10, but you know, let's say I'll give you um, 400000 No, wait a second. There's only one person supporting this mortgage. I can't give you. I'll give you 350 350 Okay, so you just lost $200,000 of the value of your house. Oh, my God. So you need to pay me immediately $150,000 if you have it and you're in a loss or you gotta sell at a loss or you gotta just leave the keys and go like they did in the states i don't I, I, fuck i don't want to get there okay i don't want to get there not as a real estate agent not as this but specifically because i live here that's the reason i want to get here because we all have families here and we need to keep the job so it's a long videos but i'm making it very clear oshawa people and all the government people the trick is not to give the money. Yes, give them, support them, but you need to think of replacing this with something else, and that thing is called cannabis. Okay? Alberta already ran out of cannabis. In the states, I don't know how many states are legal, how many not. It doesn't matter because federally is not legal in the states, and that's an advantage to Canada. So Canada needs to go full on and take that $3 billion. You hear me? Canada government, take $3 billion right now and spend it converting this into the best cannabis growing facility and research in the world. And do it first because then you're going to have first advantage to market, which is the most important advantage ever. Okay? You're going to have the amazing people of Oshawa and the amazing smart people of GM and our managers, there's engineers. There are workers on the line. These are all smart, smart, dedicated people that are working in shifts that are doing crazy, crazy work. I could never do that work, okay? None of those. I just couldn't do it. I'm very happy here in the computer. And everyone that support them right here convert this entire thing to Cannabis City. Oshawa, the top cannabis manufacturing research in the world. Let's go. Yossi, out.